I recently bought a new house. It's a two-story older home. There's a nice-sized living room that connects to an old kitchen. The upstairs is simply two bedrooms and a bathroom. And there's a full basement. The basement has a concrete floor and several shelving units, giving me the impression that one of the previous owners was big into preserves or pickling things. I was able to get the house for a great price due to the unsettling events surrounding the previous owners. They were a couple in their late 60s named Fred and Lillian. They had lived in the house for approximately a decade. The couple was well known in the neighborhood for their arguments. Apparently they fought constantly. Neighbors said it was not uncommon to hear shouting late into the night and the police had been called out many times. One day, about three months ago, Lillian left Fred. The neighbors were all pleased as things instantly became peaceful, relaxed, and quiet. They said Fred changed after his wife left. He moped around a lot and would spend hours sitting outside on the front porch nearly lifeless, staring out at nothing. The late night shouting was replaced by late night weeping. The next door neighbor stopped over to see how Fred was holding up. They said that Fred seemed weighted down by depression and had tears in his eyes as he told them, I never realized I can't live without Lillian. That night, Fred slit his wrists in his bathtub. The body wasn't discovered until weeks later when someone reported a horrible stench emanating from the house. And because of all that, plenty of people who would have otherwise been quite interested in the house were turned off, allowing me to swoop in and nab it for a nice below market price. I was thrilled and I'm quite the handyman, so what little work the house needed I was able to polish off with ease. I had been living in the house without incident for approximately one month. That was about the time I started to notice a foul, decaying odor. I knew it could not have been a lingering odor from Fred's dead body. I would have detected that when I initially looked at the place, or some other time during the past month of living in the house. It took me a little while to track it down, but the odor seemed to be originating from the basement. I figured I'd go down there and find a dead rodent of some sort, but I searched all over and couldn't find a damn thing. The smell seemed to be strongest from the right corner of the basement. I figured some small animal had got caught between the walls and died. If that was the case, the stench wouldn't last much longer. It was later that week when I was woken up by weeping sounds. It was quite loud. At first I thought there was somebody sitting outside on my front porch crying, but when I opened the front door and stepped out, there was nobody there. But the crying continued. It was coming from inside my house. I followed the sorrowful sobbing and realized it was coming from the basement. I opened the basement door and just stood silently and listened for a moment. It seemed to be deriving from the right side of the basement. I flicked on the stair lights and walked down the narrow wooden staircase to the cold cement basement. I pulled a string at the bottom of the stairs that lit a bulb which gave fair lighting to the majority of the basement. The basement was tidy. I hadn't had a chance to mess it up yet. I had several boxes down there, but those were all neatly stacked on the left side of the basement. One last distressed bellow echoed through the room, and then all went silent. I stepped toward where I was positive the crying came from, and it dawned on me that it was the same region of the basement that the odor was coming from. The next night, something else woke me up the sound of scratching. It was rather loud. I would have thought it was my dog scratching on the back door to be let outside, but I don't have a dog. 
My initial thought was that one of the neighbor's dogs was confused and was trying to get into my house instead of their own, so I marched downstairs and approached the back door. That's when I realized the scratching was not coming from the back door. It was coming from the basement. I opened the basement door and looked down into the darkness. The scratching was loud, distinct, and constant. I flicked on the stairwell light which allowed me to see my way down the stairs and stepped onto the concrete floor. As I fumbled for the string to light the basement, I could hear deep, raspy breaths accompanying the scratching. There was definitely somebody in my basement. When I grasped the string and pulled the light on, everything went silent and the basement was empty. I walked around and looked in every conceivable spot someone could hide, but I found nobody. I wondered what was going to wake me up the next night, but nothing did. Instead, I fell into a deep sleep and found myself having the most realistic dream I had ever experienced. I was sinking into the soft earth. I flailed away trying to pull myself out of the ground, but kept plummeting further. I found myself in a pit, covered with wriggling worms and squirming maggots. I could feel them twisting and turning in my mouth, down my throat, into my ears and infesting my brain. I could feel a heavy, thick, cold liquid pouring over my body, weighing me down, trapping me underground forever. I started screaming over and over, let me out, let me out. I awoke and leapt out of bed. I felt a sense of relief wash over me as I realized it was all just a horrible nightmare. But then I heard a voice, a loud sinister voice shouting, let me out. I was no longer dreaming. The voice was real, and I could tell that it was coming from the basement. Let me out. Let me out. I raced down the stairs and into the basement. As I reached for the string to pull the light on, I heard the menacing voice one more time from the right corner of the basement. Let me out. When I turned on the light, the voice went silent but I noticed something that I hadn't before. There was a large section of the right corner of the basement that looked like it had been recently cemented over. The cement was smoothed out well, and the color matched perfectly with the rest of the floor, but when I looked closely, I could spot a few rough spots around the edges that gave it away. Something was under there. The next day I rented a jackhammer and tore up the cement from the right corner of the basement. I found the dead body of a woman. She was wearing a locket with her name on it. Lillian. It turns out Lillian didn't leave Fred. Fred killed her and buried her body in the basement. I alerted the authorities. They removed the body and had it cremated. I have not experienced any paranormal activity in the house since. Psycho Caller In the 1980s, there was a popular late-night radio show in Chicago called Late Night with Dr. Berman. Dr. Berman was a psychiatrist and would take live calls. People would ring in with an array of different problems that he would try to help them with. His catchphrase when answering new calls was, What's your problem? Over the years, he answered countless bizarre calls, but his most unusual call was received on May 17, 1985. The following is the transcript of the call.
Hello, you're on Late Night with Dr. Berman. What's your problem? Hello? What's your problem, caller? How can I help you tonight? I miss my girls. Your girls? And who are your girls? Do you mean your daughters? My girls. I have three of them. And where are your girls now, caller? I don't know. I think they took them away. Who took them away? The police. Why did the police take your girls away? I guess they didn't like me having them in my house. Where did the police take your girls? Away. Okay, caller, if you want me to help you, you'll have to elaborate on what you're talking about. Now please, tell me what your problem is. I need more girls. And where do you plan to get these girls? I'll just go out and get me some. <laughs> well, you can't just go out and take random girls. That's called kidnapping. That's a crime. I don't care. I'll go out and I'll find me some girls and I'll stick my knife in their necks and they'll be mine. Okay, before you do that, caller, let's talk a little longer. Um, let's see if we can find out more about why you feel the need to do this. I enjoyed our conversation. Uh, w wait, caller, don't hang up. Hello? Hello? At that point, the call ended. The radio station successfully traced the call, and police were dispatched to the address. The location of the call was the Sherman Parks Mental Institution. The origin of the call was a security desk. When the police arrived, they found the security guard with his throat slit. After checking the patient logs, they concluded that one patient had escaped. The escaped patient's name was Rudolph Baker. He was institutionalized for murdering three women. He positioned their dead bodies around his house and would interact with them as if they were alive. He referred to them as his girls. Rudolph Baker was never recaptured. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. I'll be back soon with another scary story.